Hola a todos! Welcome back to Spanish with Padre. Today I am here to teach you one of my specialties, according to my husband. This is how to nag people to get the house chores done. Are you ready? Vamos! Okay, before we move to the house chores, you actually need the key verbs. These are called modal verbs. They express obligation, necessity, suggestions, etc. So let's have a look at some of the most useful ones in Spanish. First one we've got, tener que, which means to have to, to have to do something. Tengo que fregar los platos. I have to wash the dishes. Tengo que, I have to, plus the verb in infinitive. Infinitive, remember that that means ending in AR, ER or IR. So the form, the basic form of the verb that you would find in a dictionary. Nice? Easy? Tengo que, tener que conjugated, plus the verb in infinitive. Facilísimo! Come on! What are the forms of the verb tener? I'm going to give you the main ones. I think as long as you know I, you, we, it's more than enough. Unless you want to be perfect at the language, completely fluent, and you want to learn all the forms, fabulous. But if you're a beginner, as long as you know three of them, that would do. You've got yo tengo que, I have to. Do you have to say yo? No, not really. As long as you say tengo que, that's absolutely fine because it's the only form of the verb that can go with yo. So native speakers, we don't actually use the pronouns that much. We just say tengo que. I have to. Tengo que, plus the verb. You, you have to. Tienes que. If you're nagging your kids around the house, tienes que recoger tu habitación. You have to tidy your room. Tienes que, you have to. I am going to leave you all the forms over here, but the last one I'm going to mention is tenemos que, we have to. I use this with my husband all the time. I say, tenemos que hacer esto. We have to do this, we have to do that. What I actually mean is, tienes que. For example, tenemos que lavar los coches, AKA, tienes que lavar el coche. <laughs> Moving on with number two, numero dos. Deber plus the verb. This one doesn't have any que, all right? It goes on its own. Deber and the verb. Deber and the verb. For example, debo recoger mi habitación. What does that mean? I must. I must tidy up my room because otherwise I'll be in trouble. Debo recoger. Okay? Nothing else in the middle and the verb, again, it's an infinitive form. Again, I'll leave you up here the conjugation. I'm going to mention and pronounce the main ones which are debo, I must, Debo. Debo hacer mis deberes. I must do my homework. Debes. You must. Debes hacer tus deberes. You must do your homework. If you're saying this to, to kids again. Debes hacer tus deberes. Or debemos. Debemos visitar a la abuela. We must visit grandma. Tener que expresses obligation, but not as strong as Deber. Deber is stronger than tener que. Same as in English, really. Have to and must. Must will always be stronger. Okay, numero tres. We're moving to a weird one. This one, it's weird because it doesn't really have straightforward translation. Hay que. All the languages have it, like French, but English doesn't really have it. I love this one because it's not pointing at anybody in particular, it's involving a lot of people in doing the task and it's a polite way of addressing someone when you want something to get done. What does it mean? One has to, we have to, one has to do something, something has to be done. I que. How do we use it? I que plus the verb. I que and the verb. Okay, this one is super easy because it does not need conjugating. It never ever changes. We don't say I, you, he, she, no. It's always, always, always I, que. 
So it's a really good wild card to use in exams and conversation. If you run out of ideas, you always have Aike. It's nice and easy to remember. So if you panic, go for Aike. And last but not least, I'm just going to give you some random verbs that are super useful and that you can mix and match and use it with the different task that I'm about to give you. One that my mom uses a lot, acuérdate de, remember to do something. Acuérdate de llamarme, remember to call me. Acuérdate de recoger la cena, remember to pick up dinner. I'm thinking of takeaways. <laughs> Can you tell I'm hungry? Acuérdate de. You can use it with so many. And again, it doesn't really change it because you're not going to tell to yourself to remember something. You're usually going to tell somebody, hey, remember this, please. Acuérdate de. Very similar, we've got no te olvides de. Don't you forget this. No te olvides de. And again, the verb would go in infinitive after this one as well. No te olvides de apagar el fuego. Don't forget to turn off the hob. No te olvides de sacar al perro. Don't forget to take the dog out. No te olvides de. You want some help? Like my mom always asks me for help when she's making the bed. She says, hey, ¿me ayudas a hacer la cama? Me ayudas, can you help me? Me ayudas, you can use it on its own. Me ayudas, can you help me? Can you help me out? Me ayudas? Or if you want to specify, me ayudas a, like my mom normally says, Oye, Patri, she calls me Patri. Me ayudas a hacer la cama? Can you help me make the bed? She always says it's easier between two people. She's right, to be fair. Me ayudas a, and the verb in infinitive. Don't forget that. If you want to, you can modify the form me ayudas a, you can turn around and you can start with ayuda and then put that me at the end, ayúdame. For example, ayúdame porfa, help me please, ayúdame por favor. I shorten the por favor normally to porfa. It's all right to do that. Ayúdame porfa, ayúdame por favor. Another one asking for somebody to do something can you, puedes, puedes sacar al perro? Can you walk the dog? Puedes sacar al perro. Puedes sacar la basura? Can you take the bin out? Have you noticed that I've used the same verb for taking the dog out and taking the bin out? Sacar, I'll get to that in a minute. So, can you, puedes, puedes? If you're answering to that one, sí, puedo, yes, I can, sí, puedo. Can you? Puedes? And then the verb in infinitive. All of these have got infinitives after them. It's nice and easy to remember, to be fair. Now we're going to one that my dad says I use too often and too lightly. Necesito. Necesito. I need. Mm. Necesito más ropa de Zara. Do I really need more clothes from Zara? Probably not. Ne Necesito, necesito, I need. Necesito ir al médico, I need to go to the doctor. Necesito ir al dentista, I need to go to the dentist. Necesito, that's a need. Necesito ir a hacer la compra. Necesito ir a comprar. I need to do the shopping, I need to go do the shopping. Necesito, real things that you actually need. Necesito, or not. Okay, now we know all the key verbs and we're going to get straight to those expressions for the house chores. I've mentioned quite a few already, but let me give you the full list. Señoras y señores, con todos ustedes, the dreaded los quehaceres y tareas domésticas. I regret them as much as I do. Qué rollo, what a pain, las tareas domésticas. Let's do this. Right, let's start with one of the ones I hate the most. Fregar los platos, to wash the dishes. Fregar los platos. You could also say lavar los platos. Lavar literally means to wash. Fregar is a way of saying to wash. It can only be applicable to platos, plates, or floor normally. Again, the vocab changes depending on the country where you're at. I am talking about Spain. In Spain, we would normally say 
fregar los platos, I'm sure in Central America and South America they have other expressions. And I've just mentioned limpiar. You can wash or clean anything. Limpiar, to wash or to clean. Limpiar los cristales. We've had somebody coming today to limpiar los cristales. What a difference! Can you not tell more light is coming in? <laughs> limpiar los cristales, to clean the glass. Limpiar los cristales, the windows. Limpiar el baño. I hate that one with all my heart. I normally try to put it on my husband. Limpiar el baño. Sometimes I get away with it. Limpiar la habitación. To clean the bedroom. Limpiar en general. To clean. Okay? Regarding habitación, another very, very, very useful one would be ordenar. To tidy the bedroom. Again, if you're given an order and you don't know how to use the imperative, you don't know how to say tidy your bedroom, that requires a lot of conjugating, you can just say hay que, one has to, tidy the bedroom, ordenar la habitación. Or you can point at somebody and say debes ordenar la habitación, you must tidy your room. Or tienes que ordenar la habitación, you have to tidy your bedroom. Are we clear? Estamos? Okay, moving on. Pasar la aspiradora to vacuum. Pasar la aspiradora or aspirar. You can just use the verb aspirar to vacuum. Pasar la aspiradora is to pass the vacuum, literally. But yeah, that's how we say it, okay? To, to do the vacuuming. So, pasar la aspiradora um, en la alfombra. Aspirar la alfombra to vacuum the carpet. I've heard some Cubans in Miami, this was hilarious, I was quite confused, saying, voy a vacunar la carpeta. I am going to vacuum, vacunar la carpeta. Total Spanglish. That actually meant I am going to vaccinate the folder. Very different to vacuuming a carpet, isn't it? Total Spanglish. It made me laugh. <laughs> it really made me laugh. Right, so you can vacuum the carpet. If you're vacuuming a rug, aspirar la alfombra. Alfombra is the ones that you can move around. Alfombra. Moqueta, the one that's always in the same place. Aspirar la moqueta. I'm not a big fan of the moqueta. Mm, definitely not in the bathrooms. Upstairs, not too bad. Yeah, it's very common in England. In Spain, we don't have moqueta anywhere, really. We just do alfombras. So you could do that, or you could barrer el suelo. To sweep the floor. To sweep the floor with the escoba, barrer el suelo. Hay que barrer el suelo. ¿Con qué? Con la escoba. With the broom, con la escoba. And after you've done that, what do you normally do? If you're going for a full clean, you are going to fregar el suelo. Do you remember this expression? Fregar, that we used to use with the dishes, with the platos. You can also use it, remember, for the floor. Suelo, that is when you're cleaning the floor with a mop. Okay? Con la fregona. Fregar con la fregona. I have told you about the verb sacar, to take out. What can you take out of the house? Normally, the bin, the rubbish. Sacar la basura. You want to be more specific? Sacar la bolsa de basura. To take out the bin bag. La bolsa de basura. Bag is bolsa. Or like Americans say, take out the trash. Sacar la basura. What else can you take out of your house? Your dog. Tu perro. Sacar al perro. Sacar a los perros. I've got two now. Sacar a los perros or al perro. I have actually walked my cat as well. I know, I'm such a weirdo. Sacar al gato. What else can we do? Speaking of do, what's the verb do? Hacer. What can you do in the house? Hacer la colada. To do the laundry. Today was laundry day for me. Hacer la colada. What else can you do? Hacer la cama. I told you my mom always asks me for help when she's doing that. Hacer la cama. To make the bed. Hacer means to make and to do. We move on to another verb. This one can be tricky to pronounce if you do not know the pronunciation rules. It's quitar. 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 Quitar el polvo. To dust. Quitar means to remove. So, quitar el polvo means to dust. To remove the dust. Quitar el polvo. Tengo que quitar el polvo de la mesa. 
de la estantería, from the, from the shelf, quitar el polvo. My husband is obsessed with doing this, cortar el césped, to mow the lawn, cortar el césped. In Spain, we really don't do it that often unless you live in a house. Most people live in apartamentos, so we don't do cortar el césped. That is the jardinero, the gardener. But if you live somewhere where there is césped, grass, and you've got a jardín, a garden, you might want to say to somebody, hey, ¿puedes cortar el césped? Can you mow the lawn? Or you can look at it and realize, oh my God, this is so long, it's such a mess. You might want to say to somebody, hay que cortar el césped. One has to mow the lawn. Mow the lawn. Cortar el césped. By the way, do you know the name of the machine? The lawn mower? Corta césped. Corta césped. Ours is roto. Ours has just broken. I oh, know. Corta césped. Does anybody have a spare corta césped we can borrow? Super useful, especially to tell the kids when they are young to start getting into this. Poner la mesa. To set the table. Hey, pon la mesa, por favor. Set the table, please. I'm giving you the imperative for this one because it's, it's very, very useful. Pon la mesa. Easy to remember as well. Set the table, lay the table. And how would you say to clean the table, quita la mesa, poner, to put, quitar, to remove, so quita la mesa, or you can say, tienes que poner la mesa, tienes que quitar la mesa, simple as that. I have told you this one already, your bedroom, they need to be tidy, ordenadas, so what do you need to do? Recoger la habitación or ordenar la Habitación. Remember, the H is not there. We never pronounce it. Recoger, roll that R. Ordenar, ordenar. Both mean to tidy. Tidy up your room. Recoge la habitación. Ordena la habitación. Another synonym for habitación is cuarto, cuarto, room. It's the same word as quarter. Very weird. Some people hate doing this one. I don't mind it actually, I put on the TV and it's quite relaxing for me. Planchar la ropa. To iron the clothes. Planchar la ropa. What do you do after planchar la ropa? You need normally to doblar. Doblar la ropa. To fold the clothes. And then, last but not least, colocar. Colocar in the pegs or in the drawer. Colocar la ropa to put the clothes in their place. So it would be planchar, doblar, and colocar in that order. How would you put it into an imperative? Plancha, dobla, ordena, coloca. Right, I told you I was getting hungry. It's almost that time for me. What do I need to do? Cocinar, cook, or preparar la comida, or la cena, Cocinar or preparar la comida or la cena. Comida is lunch, cena is dinner. Cocinar is to actually cook it, preparar is to prepare it if you're doing something that does not need cooking. And I've got one last one for you. Hacer la compra. To do the shopping. Now there's a difference between saying ir de compras, that's what I like doing, ir de compras, to go shopping and hacer la compra, to do the shopping, hacer versus ir. Hacer la compra is nowhere near as fun as ir de compras. Ir de compras, I go to Zara, and hacer la compra, I go to Mercadona, Sainsbury's, depends where I am. And it's the food shop, isn't it? Hacer la compra. Y ya está, that's all I had to share with you about tareas domésticas. You're going to be absolute pros at nagging people in Spanish to get those house chores ready. But if I've missed any of them that you really wanted to know, if you want me to help you out with any of them that you're not sure, leave me a comment and I'll be more than happy to help you out. Wait until the end because I'm going to give you an idiomatic expression that you can use to sound like an absolute native. But before that, if you're enjoying this, if you think this is useful, please don't forget to click the like button, me gusta, and subscribe if you haven't done it yet. And now let's crack on with that idiom. I love an idiom. So, 
One that we use a lot in Spain to express that something is spotless, really, really clean, is está más limpio que los chorros del oro. Está más limpio que los chorros del oro. What does it mean? It's cleaner than the chorros del oro, the fountains of gold, los chorros del oro. I'm not sure where this expression comes from, but we always say it. For example, if somebody asks you, have you cleaned it properly? You say, como los churros del oro. Have you cleaned the bathroom? Has limpiado el baño? Lo he dejado como los churros del oro. I have left it like the churros del oro. Or, está más limpio que los churros del oro. ¿Está tu cuarto limpio? Is your room tidy? Is your room clean? Sí, como los churros del oro. Well, I hope this was super useful. Muchas, muchas gracias y hasta luego, chicos. Adiós.